Okay, so in this video, we will look at the relationship between differentiability and continuity. So here's the first result we'll prove. And the result is the following. Differentiability implies continuity. So all this says is if at one value of x the function is differentiable at this point, automatically the function will also be continuous at this point. So let's prove this. Let's draw a simple picture to recall the derivative of the function. Suppose a graph of f of x looks something like this. And suppose that we assume the function is differentiable at, say, this point, x0. So this is here a fixed value of x, x0. And we assume that at this point the function is differentiable, and we'll prove that, as a consequence, the function will also be continuous at this point. Well, if you remember, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at the point x0. And to find the slope of the tangent line, we have to find first the slope of the secant line. So we add to x0 a small amount. So say x0 plus h. And we think of h as a very, very small quantity. And now we can look at the secant line, the line passing through these two points. Of course, the slope of our secant line is the change in y over the change in x change in y delta y, which is the value of the function at this point, so f of x0 plus h, minus the smaller y value, the y value at this point, which is f of x0. So total change in y, the value of the function at the right hand point, f of x0 plus h, minus the y value of the function at x0, f of x0. The change in x, delta x, of course is the larger x value, x0 plus h, minus the smaller x value, x0, and of course it simplifies as h. And so now the slope of our secant line is quite simply delta y over delta x, change in y over change in x, the change in y, f of x0 plus h minus f of x0 over h. But we know this is not the derivative, as the derivative would be the slope of the tangent line, the line that touches the function only at the point x0, f of x0. But we know that as h shrinks to 0, the secant line will gradually get closer and closer to the tangent line. So if we let h shrink to 0 in this expression, the slope of the secant line will approach the slope of the tangent line. And so the derivative of the function f prime at x0 is the limit as h approaches 0 of the slope of the secant line at x0. f of x0 plus h minus f of x0 over h. So now we have the derivative. By assumption, since the function is differentiable at x0, the derivative exists at this point, and so this limit is defined. Now let me simply rewrite this in a different form to make the connection with continuity slightly more obvious. If you ask, well, what is the point x0 plus h? All this value is, is a variable that will approach x0 as h is shrinking to 0. So here I'll make a change of variable. I will let x be x0 plus h. Now let's see what happens to the expression as we make this change of variable. Well, first look at the expression. I'm letting x be 
x0 plus h. So this will become f of x minus f of x0 over, and to obtain h, if you think of it, we'll solve for h here, subtract x0 from both sides, and so x minus x0 is h. And now look at the limit. As h is approaching 0, so this shrinks to 0, therefore x will be approaching x0. So the limit here becomes a limit as x is approaching x0. And if you go back to the picture, this is obvious. This point needs to approach x0, but we're letting this point be x. Therefore, our point x must be getting closer and closer to x0. And that's it. Now, here's where it's interesting. Look at the case that we're in. More specifically, our denominator. As x is approaching x0, x minus x0 is approaching 0. So we have a something over 0 case. But by assumption, since the function is differentiable at x0, the derivative exists, so this limit must exist. But the only way that a limit exists with an over 0 case is if the numerator is also shrinking to 0. Think of it. If this was not the case, if our, not our numerator sorry, is not shrinking to 0, since we have a division by 0, the limit would not exist. But because by assumption it does, it must be a 0 over 0 case. Therefore, as x approaches x0, f of x minus f of x0 is approaching 0. So now let's write this separately. That is the implication. Therefore, this must be shrinking to 0 as x approaches 0. And so the limit, as x approaches x0, of our numerator must be equal to 0. But now think of this. x0 is fixed, so f of x0 is a fixed constant. The only term changing is f of x. So the only way for our expression to be equal to 0 in the limit is for f of x to be approaching f of x0 as x is approaching 0. So the implication is that as x is approaching x0, f of x must be getting closer and closer and closer to f of x0. So the limit of f of x as x approaches x0 is equal to f of x0. But if you think about this, this is by definition the statement that f of x is continuous at x0, right? The value of the function at x0 exists, and the limit of the function as x approaches x0 also exists, and they're both equal. This is by definition the statement that f of x is continuous at x0. And this completes our proof. If you remember, we claimed that if at a point, x0, the function is differentiable, it must automatically be continuous. And this is the argument. We assume the function was differentiable, therefore the limit must exist. Because we have a division by 0 in the limit, the numerator must also shrink to 0, which implies that as x approaches x0, f of x must approach f of x0, which is by definition continuity at the point x0. You may ask now, is the converse also true? Does continuity imply differentiability? And the answer is no. It's possible for a function at a given point to be continuous, but not differentiable. Let's give an example of this claim. And as you'll see, it will be a very simple example. So here's what we claim is true. Continuity 
Now the arrow means imply, and I'll put a slash across it to say it does not imply. So continuity does not imply differentiability. Well, to show this, we have to come up with an example where at a given point the function is continuous and not differentiable. Our example is the absolute value function at the point 0. Let's look at the graph of this function, which by now should be very familiar. All the absolute value function does is make things positive. So when x is already positive, it does nothing. Therefore, it is the function y equals x. And when x is negative, to make a negative become positive, we negate it. And so the line is y equals negative x. We can, of course, write the function algebraically in the following way. If x is non-negative, the value is x. So the absolute value of x is x. If x is non-negative, and if x is negative, we negate x. Now, clearly, from the graph, the function is continuous at 0, right? As x is approaching 0 from the left, y is approaching 0. And as x is approaching 0 from the right, y is also approaching 0. And we can look at this, if you want, from the limit point of view. So limit as x approaches 0 from the left, and limit as x approaches 0 from the right. If x is approaching 0 from the left, x is slightly smaller than 0. So x is negative. So whenever x is negative, the absolute value of x is negative x. If x approaches 0 from the right, x is positive. And when x is positive, the absolute value is x. And now both limits are trivial. As x shrinks to 0, negative x also shrinks to 0. As x shrinks to 0, positive x also shrinks to 0. So the limit from the left and from the right are both equal to 0, which implies that the two-sided limit of the absolute value function is equal to 0. But 0 is the absolute value of 0. So the function at the point equals the limit of the function at the point, and so by definition, the absolute value function is continuous at 0. And this was again obvious from the graph. A function is continuous if there is no break in the function. There is no break, we have continuity. So check. Here's a function at this point that is continuous. Let's prove that it is not differentiable. And even if you, again, look at it graphically, you get the feeling that there's something funny going on. If the function would be differentiable, you could draw a unique tangent line at this point. But as you have a cusp here, there are an infinite number of tangent lines. Right? This line is a tangent line. This line is a tangent line. This is a tangent line. This would be a tangent line. There seems to be an infinite number of tangent lines. So there is something funny going on here as far as the derivative is concerned. Well, we will look at the derivative as we are approaching 0 from the left and from the right and see that we get two different values. So first we'll compute Newton's quotient for the derivative at x0. So f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 over h the function is simply the absolute value. So absolute value of 0 plus h minus absolute value of 0 over h. But the absolute value of 0 plus h is the absolute value of h. 
absolute value of 0 is 0, so we get nothing else, over h. So as far as Newton's quotient is concerned around x0 being 0, it is simply absolute value of h over h. Slope of the secant line. Now let's look at what happens when h approaches 0 from the left and from the right, because h is allowed to shrink to 0 from either the positive and negative side. So let's see what happens with this. So we have Newton's quotient, the absolute value of h over h in both cases. Now here's where it's interesting. As h approaches 0 from the left, h is negative, and so the absolute value of h becomes negative h over h stays there. As h approaches 0 from the right, h is larger than 0, so h is positive. Therefore, the absolute value of h is h over h. Well, negative h over h cancels to negative 1, h over h cancels to 1, and now we have two trivial limits. As h shrinks to 0 from the left, negative 1 is always negative 1, therefore the limit is negative 1. As h approaches 0 from the right, 1 is always 1, therefore the limit is 1. And you see, as we are approaching 0 from the left and from the right, we get different slopes. The slope on the left is negative 1, the slope on the right is positive 1, which again is pretty clear if you look at the graph of the function. Think of a tangent line with a point on the left of 0. You'd have a point here and a point here. Now the secant line would simply be the line y equals negative x and clearly the slope of this line is negative 1 as we have just found. Now take a secant line with a point at the right of 0. We already have this point. Take say this point. Here's a second point and the secant line passing through these two points is the line y equals x now which clearly has a slope of 1, as we have found algebraically. Well, which one do we choose? On the left of 0, the slope is negative 1. On the right of 0, the slope is positive 1. We can't choose. Both the left limit and the right limit give different values, which imply that the limit of Newton's quotient as h approaches 0 does not exist, which implies that this function is not differentiable at 0. But, as we have said initially, although the function is not differentiable at 0, it is continuous. And this completes our claim, because our claim was that continuity does not imply differentiability. So it is possible for a function to be continuous at a point, but not differentiable at the same point and the absolute value function at the point 0 is such an example. It is continuous there, no break in the function, but the derivative does not exist, so our function is not differentiable at 0, but it is continuous. So always keep this in mind. If a function is differentiable, it is automatically continuous. If a function is continuous, you don't know. It could be differentiable or it could not be differentiable. And that's it.